Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you a place that I stumbled upon by chance while driving back from Perth to Adelaide. It's a small town called Iron Knob and it has a very interesting story to tell. Iron Knob is known as the birthplace of Australia's steel industry. Iron Knob is located about 70 km southwest of Port Augusta and 55 km northwest of Wyala on the Eyre Peninsula. It's a place with a rich history and a fascinating geology. Iron Knob got its name from the huge deposits of iron ore that are found in the area, especially on Iron Monarch Hill, which stands out from the flat landscape. The iron ore here is very high quality with a purity of about 70%. It was first discovered by Europeans in 1839 during Edward John Eyre's expedition. The first mining claim was pegged by BHP in 1897 and mining began in 1900. Do you know the full form of BHP? It stands for Broken Hill Proprietary. Since then, Iron Knob has played a crucial role in the development of Australia's steel industry, supplying iron to Newcastle, Port Kembla and Wyala. In fact, 21% of the steel used for construction of the Sydney Harbour Bridge came from Iron Knob. Iron Knob also has some international connections. In the 1920s and 1930s, iron ore from Iron Knob was exported to countries like Netherlands, Germany, the United Kingdom and even Japan. However, this became controversial in the late 1930s as Japan was preparing for war and Australia's iron ore reserves were limited. 100 years of mining has left its mark on Iron Knob. The height of Iron Monarch Hill has been reduced by more than 150 meters. After more than a century of mining, the town's population and economy declined leaving behind many abandoned buildings and structures. One of them is an old petrol pump that stands on the side of the road near the entrance to the town. It is a relic of a bygone era, when petrol stations were common along the highways and travellers would stop by to refuel and rest. The pump is rusted and faded with no sign of the brand or the price of the petrol. It is surrounded by weeds and rubbish and has not been used for decades. Another example of the town's decay is the houses that are scattered around the town. Many of them are empty and dilapidated, with broken windows, peeling paint and sagging roofs. Some of them have been vandalized or burned down, while others have been taken over by the squatters or animals. The houses reflect the hardship and isolation that the residents of Iron Knob have faced over the years as they struggle to cope with the decline of their town. There are some interesting stories about the people of Iron Knob. One of the most famous residents of Iron Knob was Ada Casey, who was born in the town in 1912 and lived there until her death in 2007. She was a historian, author, teacher and community leader who wrote several books and articles where she worked as a volunteer guide for many years. She was awarded the Medal of the Order of Australia in 1999 for her service to the community. Another notable person from Iron Knob was John Jack Oti, who was born in the town in 1920 and became one of the most successful Australian rules football coaches in history. A third example of an interesting person from Iron Knob is Robert Bob Quinn, who was born in the town in 1921 and became a decorated soldier and politician. He served in World War II and was awarded the Military Medal for his bravery at Tobruk in 1941. He was captured by the Germans in 1942 and spent three years as a prisoner of war. After the war, he returned to Iron Knob and worked as a minor and union official. He was elected to the South Australian House of Assembly as a Labour member for Wyala in 1968 and held the seat until his retirement in 1985. He was also a minister in several Labour governments holding portfolios such as mines, industry, labour and Aboriginal affairs. These are just some of the stories about the people of Iron Knob. If you want to learn more, you can visit the Iron Knob Tourist Centre and Museum or read some of the books and articles written by Ada Kessie.
like i said uh, the town's population has declined over the years however the town still has some attractions for visitors there is a tourist center that displays items related to the mining history and geology of the area there is also a possibility of taking a tour of the mine site for those who enjoy golf or lawn bowls there are some recreational facilities available and for those who want to experience the outback lifestyle there is a roadhouse and a motel nearby So, if you are looking for a place to learn about Australia's mining heritage and see some amazing iron formations, Iron Knob is definitely worth a visit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more adventures. See you next time. Bye.